morning guys, Jim P.A. Woodsman Channel. We're out on a blustery Sunday morning, high of 15 degrees. We're going to head over to 12 acres this morning, do our mile and walk in, hang out for a while, come back. They were tested in uh, the clothing I have for the uh, hike coming in February. I'm going to be buying some other stuff, but I want to, this is general what I'm going to be wearing. Just give me an idea if it's going to be adequate or not. Uh, we all know whenever you're moving, you tend to stay fairly warm. It's when you stop and you're uh, not as active is when you start getting chilled. So uh, I'll explain my clothing once we get there. But uh, we'll do a fire, uh, try out one of my dehydrated backpack in those days I brought with me the uh, not so uh, stuffed pepper casserole. We're going to do that for lunch, have some coffee, put a warm meal in you. That's a lot to do with keeping your uh, body core temperatures and drinking stuff that's warm and eating stuff that's warm so but uh, not enough snow for snow shoeing but I did bring my micro spikes with me just in case the uh, there isn't uh, any ice pack or anything like that so which I kind of doubt it but just have just to be on the safe side all right guys we'll check in after a while all right guys we're back <sighs> it is definitely cold out here half tempted to uh, get out my uh, fleece buckle off and put on because my nose is getting cold but my fear in that is that with me walking and my breath I'm just going to get ice crystals all over the damn thing it's not going to do me any good whenever I'm sitting stationary so I may want to pick up a uh, oh a buff something that's thinner that's in a let me uh, walk, and if it's a little moisture on it, it'll dry out quickly too. And I'll put on my other one when I'm stationary. So, but, uh, got the. I don't know if you're see these. The, my uh, Tatula microscopes on. Oh, you're gonna see that. I was doing some thinking on the way out this morning. Since we got time here, we'll chit chat. Uh, I know most of you realize it, because I've said it many times. I'm not an expert. I learn a lot of stuff out here by watching other people's videos. Uh, some from military background, and a lot by trial by error, just from experiment. So. But uh, we're all out here to put something on the table to help every one of us succeed. I got a PM from an unmentioned subscriber the other day. He had an issue with uh, another YouTuber. Spoke to that YouTuber. Played mediator. And... Uh, Got a little bit of understanding what happened, but the sad thing is, it shouldn't happen. We need to just realize that everyone has their own personality. Everyone has their uh, uh, their abilities. You know, there's people out there that can start a bow fire with their eyes closed with bow and drill. Me, still can't. Does that mean I'm uh, I'm no better than that other person? No. It just means they're still at bow and drill method is a better than mine. And I need to practice to get as good. No one out there is better than the other person. Their abilities may be better, but that's because they have that knack or they've practiced and practiced and practiced and they got the experience. That's why I see that my my employment I get people in that are new. They would be EMTs, they would be in paramedics. They're not gonna know everything at the beginning. They're gonna get it with time and experience. In fact I don't know everything. I'm learning stuff every day. I don't see everything. I see a lot. 
I ain't gonna lie, but every day something new jumps out and smacks you in the face. So, people, just try to chill. You know, realize that we're all out here for the same reason. Enjoy nature and to survive while we're doing it. That brings up another point. As on another forum I belong to, a uh, discussion came up on get home badge, bug out badge, Bob, you know. And uh, one guy happened to show photos of his deer. All new. Hardly looked used. He claims he's used it, which is possible, because I'm the same way. I use my deer and I clean it when I get home. It doesn't look very used, but it's used. Trust me. I just like to take care of it, so I know it, it's there for the next trip. Habit I picked up from the military. Preparation. Team. But that's the point I'm getting at. Too many times I've seen these guys with these AR-15s, AKs, uh, military-style uh, knives, knives, etc with not a lick of military training. I'm sorry guys. It isn't like the movies. It isn't Rambo. You're not going to be your one man army. Even some of our elite forces, you know, they're good and they're quite capable. But they'll even admit, you know, well they might not admit, that they're not going to be able to take down 50 guys themselves, you know. They go in platoons for squads, you know. And they have the equipment to do their job and they constantly train at it. You know. These guys ain't even weekend warriors like the guard, you know. They don't get the training. You know. You're not going to stand right out in the open and start firing at people. You know, you got to learn how to take cover and, you know, up that guy. Okay, what I was trying to get at was concealment and cover. They're two different things. You want to conceal yourself from your enemy. You want to take cover from your enemy's fire. You know, you're not going to be standing out there open, firing off clips after clips. You're going to make sure that that shot that you fire counts. You know, I wasn't, a, I wasn't an elite soldier by any means, but I was still taught how to kill the enemy and to protect myself from the enemy at all means. You know, none of us wants to die. None of our fighting men and women overseas right now are wanting to die. But they're making that ultimate sacrifice to protect us from harm. You know, and <coughs> I've never had to kill anyone. I've killed things, yes, I'm a hunter. But it's not a comparison to taking another human being's life. How are we gonna act? Hell, I don't know. I might peep my guts out. <laughs> Who knows? I don't think so. I'm pretty tough. At least I believe I am. You know, there's stories of men under fire and distress shitting and pissing themselves. You know, it's a lot different when the bullets are flying your way, you guys. So, so please think about that when you go out and you get these bug out bags, you get home bags and stuff. You know, personally, yeah, I'd love to have an AR. Well, I think I can probably do better with either a shotgun or a bolt action rifle or something in that effect that I'm able to use to procure food for me and my family and whoever's with me. You know, so just something to think about, guys. A lot of tracks out here. There's human tracks too, so I'm thinking it's a hunter. Or a gentleman out walking his dog, so I've seen a lot of dog tracks too. So, or not even, so I don't think it's a coyote. I've seen a lot of rabbit tracks too. It's not the second season small game yet, so I'm not hunting. So, it was either today or yesterday walking, so Red Bank's not frozen over completely. There's some ice. So, alright, guys. Well, I'm going to hush up for now. Alright guys. 
when we're down to 12 acres, I'll give you some views here after we get a fire started. So I can get some water going here and have some coffee and lunch. What I did is along the way, because I don't have them right here direct as a hemlock, I grabbed a couple pine branches and uh, somebody said that the uh, rhododendron leaves go up pretty good. They have a lot of sap, so we're giving that a try. Mountain Laurel rhododendron. A lot of ice pack on the red bank. So, Hope I didn't get grease all over this now. There we are. Thought I had a bunch of Vaseline on my cotton ball and around here is great. I'm using it as a tender. And everything I use today so far I really didn't need the axe for. So I just broke over my knee around the tree but There's a lot of good reasons to have an axe, though. not only for gathering firewood. A uh, good prime example is right, well, not right now, but if I got here and there was no snow in the ground and I ran out of water, I needed to access water. I could uh, break a hole through the ice. Some of these cliffs actually have uh, icicles hanging off of them. I could knock a couple icicles off, bring down to my site, and boil down to melt down for water. That's like I was saying earlier, guys, about bringing stuff to the table. I just did that just to try it out and it worked good, you know. So that's a tip. Don't always have to get down there and blow on the damn thing. But, uh, in every way, there's not a set way all the time on doing things. Yeah, in the medical fields, we have sort of protocols we have to follow, but survival, there isn't always a direct protocol. Uh, it's like martial arts fighting. I'll spin the camera around here towards me while that thing gets hot. I'm not a martial arts specialist by no means. I play around with the daughter and joke around and stuff, but I'm no black belt or anything like that. But uh, Crockett 20 could chime in on this one as well as other people out there that practice the uh, martial arts. Is you might take a karate or an ishiru or a, a jiu-jitsu cl class at different schools and they might have a little bit different technique than the other school. 
does that matter out there no especially if you're on the one in the receiving end and you just got your ass kicked you don't give a shit what the technique was that just whooped the crap out of you you just know you got your ass kicked so don't worry about how other people do things worry about how you do your things you know if it works for you great if it don't look at other people's ideas out there try them you know I'm gonna try and talk and try. I'm gonna try and get some bigger wood on here. And then we'll go shoot some get some stills and some video of the red bank with the uh ice. Okay, it's flowing pretty decent right here, but you can see the ice pack here, so you wouldn't want to walk on that. Uh, the water level's still up. We've had a lot of rain before this, and plus you figure wherever it's frozen down below is probably backing it up a little bit. There might be some jams, so... But, uh, Beautiful. See a lot further now with the snow in the ground than it was back here buck season, so that's like yesterday I got online and well not online, got on my uh, Garmin map source program and uh got a look to the area here to see what I was in the middle of hunting here and uh, not very far from some houses actually there's some right up on top of the hill from here so I grab some bigger fuel to the fire so but there's a lot of dry grasses here just gotta watch right now because there's still frost on everything so it hasn't Got above freezing at all in the past couple weeks, so. Alright, we're gonna go back up and tend our fire and warm up and get some coffee going. sitting here waiting for water to heat up it's going to be a while to get some coals going uh, when I was walking I was mentioning to you about clothing what I'm planning on doing for when I'm walking is either my standard hiking boots I haven't decided yet I might buy another pair if I can afford to between now and then but I'm not sure yet I have two pair of wool socks on they're not the greatest wool socks the Walmart brand I'm probably gonna buy some better ones for uh, keeping my feet warm. Follow that, I have my Poly Propylene Long Johns. These are like a mid weight. And they have a silver thread in them, so it helps with odor for hunting. Because I know a lot of people say that Poly Propylene holds odor, which is true. Uh, I'm only planning on wearing these during the day while I'm hiking for added warmth. At night, I have a pair of, sort of Poly Blend with wool. They're a lot thicker, uh, softer. They'll be my sleeping uh, Long Johns. And then I'm just wearing this fleece top on top and then my extreme cold weather uh, Gore-Tex military parker. Probably going to be using this on the trip as well. It's the only one I have for now. I definitely someday want to get a down parka. I have my Montbell inner here with me. I'll have it with me on the trail too for when I'm sitting still if it's really cold at night. Also have in here
for now is my hunting bottle of I'm hoping to pick up a better one before the trip but I have this if I want to wear it right now I've warmed up some so I'm good I don't need it I also have a pair of these waterproof uh, Thinsulate brand gloves for inside camp uh, these are just for standing around purposes there's not enough dexterity with them to really do much so for that I have my uh, thin, thinner pair uh, fleece which I may get a better pair down the road too and then these are my makeshift wristies if you want to call them it's an old pair of mitts that they wouldn't stay closed so what I did was uh, cut off the mitt portion this way I still have access to my fingers keep the rest of my hand warm which that feels pretty good <laughs> I think I'm gonna grab the other one if I can find it but uh, I'm gonna do that also I have my gators on at the bottom so to help keep snow and stuff out and my yak tracks so these are perfect for weather like this and I did find out when I took them up with me to scout that area the first day for the hang is that uh, the fresh snow don't let it let the ground get hard because all you with the fresh powder snow all I was doing was catching wet snow in the cleats and they just ball up and I was constantly having to kick my feet off of something to uh, knock the snow off so but uh, trying to think of anything else we're talking to Hammy Tanner I don't know if anyone of you that are going to, or watching my videos here uh, there's another gentleman new subscriber I wish I had his name down Pat I just spoke to him yesterday so I don't know his name yet real well so I apologize in advance he did a video up on the Hickory Creek Trail. He's not sure if he's going to be able to make the trip. He doesn't have the gear right now for the winter, which I can understand. Not everyone having it. I'm trying to get what I can here to make myself a little more comfortable. I'm not going to have everything I want this year, but I'll get the majority of it and buy some more through the summer months when it's on special, or hopefully. So, so I try to do buy stuff, a lot of stuff in the season. That way I have it for the following year. So I'm still hoping to maybe get a pulp done. Because next year I want to have that uh, down uh, uh, top quilt zero degree and a few other odds and ends and take up some weight so it can be pulled around in the sled easier. But I'm definitely going to get a stool because I know uh, there ain't going to be stuff like this to sit on when we're up there on our hammock hang. So I might just try to find a light one I can pack in with me. In the meantime, to have so. Please, you smoke right in my face. Had my coffee. Now we're just waiting for. <laughs> not so stuffed bell pepper casserole I made coming together. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. Since I have the ability to leave it on fire we're going to leave it on the fire with the lid off and let it heat some more. Made sure it uh, boils off some more of that liquid. So, and we'll kick back and throw it in the toes again. Made for it and enjoyed it. Haven't had the heart yet to uh, put that GLS uh, minimalist at. Bill Wallhiker sent me on a fire yet and get any soot on it so this will work what we're doing I didn't bring a whole lot of gear with me today just brought my uh, small survival kit some extra clothing my first aid kit some water 
fire starting equipment, my axe, my seven saw, and this. So, figured uh, I knew what the weather forecast was. And uh, I wouldn't need my Etawa tarp or any type of windbreak. And I know where I'm at. I know where I can get to shelter quick if I need to. So, hmm, ash in my. Casper. So, we're going to let that go for a couple more minutes and sit it in the cozy and let it cool off a little bit and enjoy. Don't want to cool it off too much because I want it in my my body warming up my core. So, all right, guys, we'll talk to you after. All right, food's done. Just waiting for it to cool down a little bit. It looks good. It smells good. But uh, while we're sitting here waiting, try to get the fire burnt down the rest of the way too. I'm not too worried about leaving no trace since it's my prop, our property, family property. So, but uh, we've been here talking about clothing and heating our core and everything. But we also need to talk about what causes us to lose body heat and how we can prevent it if at all possible so there's really no set order one person might call it one thing one call it the other so first off you see me wearing layered clothing and that's to prevent uh, radiation convention cooling by the wind sucking the heat out of me or blowing cold air on me uh, also the ambient air temperature getting inside me so then there's uh, uh, absorption or uh, convention as well and that's for me like sitting on this cold log right now it's ice cold if I would have sat directly on it it would have went and just drew all the heat out of me to try to make it warm like osmosis going from the point of uh, most resistance to the least resistance. I can't remember the exact way it goes. It's been a while since I graduated, so. <laughs> but uh, you get the point. So what I do is I put this foam pad down that I'm sitting on. It's giving me a separate layer between my clothing and this log. So it's slowing, it's not eliminating the process totally. It's still a little cold. It's just slowing it down and minimizing the effect that the uh, to uh, to absorption is having on my body. There's also uh, radiation goes on, and that whenever you sweat, that causes you to lose uh, uh, heat. Uh, so that's why I always tell you wear your hat because heat rises just like in a house it rises comes out of your head and goes off and so you want to maintain maintain that heat but in the same token you don't want to cause yourself to sweat it's all right if after, after a while you feel yourself getting a little overheated take your hat off let everything go uh, let the wind come through it's going to dry it off before you then go ahead and put your hat back on and go back to it it's just like land if you find yourself you're getting too warm hiking stop take that take the park off wrap it up put it inside your backpack tie it off whatever keep on trucking you start getting cold again stop take your coat out put it back on you know yeah it's a pain in the ass but you got to regulate your uh, your heat so but uh, keep yourself hydrated before you go to bed at night eat yourself a warm meal drink yourself a warm drink uh, be it tea coffee hot chocolate something to help uh, warm that inner core and to help you sleep a whole lot better and it's uh 
what your body needs to maintain the heat in the furnace and there's the calories. Mmm. Mmm, 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 guys. I'm happy. So. But just limit yourself what you do. You're not going to do as much as in, the, in the winter as you're going to do this summer. You're not going to travel the distance like you do in the summer. Today isn't so bad because there's not a lot of snow. But when there's heavy snow down your snowshoeing and post holing, it's going to take you longer. Be very careful, like I said. Yeah, this isn't all. There's some ice on the red bank, but it's not totally thick. You got that's what's nice about trekking poles. You don't have a trekking pole take a long stick. Check that ice right in front of you. You got to go out a little distance to break through the ice of your ass get yourself water or something or to try to fish or whatever if you're in a survival situation the last thing you want to do is go through that ice and into that water because I can almost guarantee you're gonna die you're not gonna you're gonna be so damn cold you're not gonna have the dexterity to start making a fire if you don't have something to wrap yourself in and dry yourself off get yourself warmed up a little bit enough where your fingers start to work and you think straight then you get a fire yeah I know Bear Gillis will argue that point, you know, you see him bare naked all the time and the, and the ice cold water gets out, rolls in the snow and then uh, starts, some, uh, starts uh, himself a fire. Well, he's done that more than once. His body's used to it. Ours isn't, you know. We're used to the comfy uh, recliner in our warm house set to 72 degrees, watching a football game, drinking a beer, eating a sandwich, staying warm with a blanket with the remote. He's out doing this stuff, not only for us as in uh, technique, but when he was a uh, in the special forces of the uh, British military. So, and I give the man credit; he he does know his stuff. But I'm just saying it's a little easier for him to respond to that situation immediate compared to one of us. You know, I would hope I could respond to it like he does. You know, because I we all have the will to survive. That's the biggest thing with survival, folks. You gotta have the will to survive. If you don't want to live, you're not gonna live. You know, you gotta push yourself. So. Well, enough of me rambling. We're gonna enjoy our not so stuff bell pepper lunch. Let the fire continue to burn down and head home to that warm recliner, remote, and 72 degrees here shortly. Well, like I was saying, if you needed to ascertain some water and didn't have a stream and didn't have the snow on the ground, but it was cold enough that ice formed from runoff, you could break some of that ice off and melt in your pot. Yeah, it doesn't look the prettiest, but you can boil it, and if you want to strain it through a coffee filter or a handkerchief or bandana or something to make it look a little more appeasing to you, you can do it, but at least you're not going to uh, dehydrate, go without water. So, and guys, also wanted to say something. I may have jumbled up my uh, terminologies for you with how you can lose heat. So I apologize. Like I said, we're, I'm, I'm never said I'm an expert. So, but you got the drift. What I was explaining: the radiation, the absorption, the. Uh, Oh, condensation and evaporation. So, alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves out of here. I'm not gonna take the time to put my camera on the stick pick right now, guys. But I am gonna say once again, as always, thank you for watching the PA Woodsman. Everyone have a very blessed Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you next year.